What is up, you guys? And welcome to another week of workout. So in this week of workout, I'm going to show you guys my current four-day workout split, which is basically surrounded around my goals of growing my glutes, getting bigger quads. I want to be thick out here, okay? I also want to get to do five non-assisted pull-ups, get stronger and more defined muscles in my upper body, like my arms and my back, and keep my waist small. So my first day of my workout is usually hammies and glutes. I like to start my week off strong, and this has a more emphasis on glutes. But before I start, I always do dynamic stretching. Now dynamic stretching is basically just moving your body in and out of a movement and this just helps warm up your muscles that you're about to use for your workouts. So because when I do my hammies and glutes, I tend to do a lot of hip flexions, I like to make sure that my hips are warmed up. So I do these like hip rotators where I kind of do external rotation with one leg at a time for about 10, I would say 10 reps per leg. And my hips tend to be very sore, especially not even sore, just tight, my hips and my hamstrings. So I like to really stretch those out. Here I'm doing um, some hamstring like stretches, making sure that I'm feeling the pull and the stretch along the back of each hamstring. And then this once again is just kind of going into a deep squat and then coming back up. I also like to rock my body from side to side because this just allows my hips to open up for a lot of the hip flexing that I will be doing on my leg day. And then lastly, what I like to do are these like ankle stretches, also inner thigh stretches. So I kind of just rock my body front and back, stretching my inner thigh, stretching my ankle, which helps with ankle mobility when you do leg day, and then also stretching my hamstrings as I stretch back because my hamstrings be tight. I don't know, maybe I should start like doing foam roller more so after my workouts, but yeah, when I finished, I had to put some cream on because my knees were ashy and we don't want to have an ashy knee or hands or body, especially when we're recording. That's just not cute. So the first exercise I did was a hip thrust variation, which I usually like to start off my workouts with my heavier lifts. This one I did is a single leg hip thrust on the hip thrust machine, which was actually my first time doing this because I have a glute imbalance and I really want to kind of balance out my glutes, which is completely normal, by the way. OK, right side bigger than the left because I am right handed. But by doing single leg hip thrust, I'm allowing just that one leg to do all the work rather than both legs on the floor and having my stronger leg overcompensate. So here I'm making sure that my feet are parallel to my knees so my shins are vertically straight, which was allowing me to engage my glutes more and keeping my back completely flat onto the bench so I'm not over arching and over thrusting because that can hurt your lower back. So the second exercise I did was my barbell RDLs, which was another big lift for me. And I like to start warming up with just a barbell because this allows me to really engage my hamstring and my glutes, which is what you wanna feel when you do these. So if you guys wanna have that like lifted butt, that Brazilian butt look, this will really help you because this does really target the lower part of your glutes if you bend your knees. So if you keep your legs straight, you're gonna feel it more in your hamstrings. But when you bend your knees and push your hips back like you wanna touch the wall behind you, that's when you're gonna feel the lower part of your glutes stretch in. Now also, I'm bringing the bar all the way down to my ankles, but you don't have to do this, okay? I have pretty good hip mobility, so I'm able to do this while keeping my back straight. But for some people, you may just have to be able to only go down past your knees and come back up, and that's still full range of motion for you and just as effective. So I went ahead and added weight towards the bolt to the barbell, and I actually, as you guys can see, have an underhand and overhand grip, which allows me to have a better grip of the bar and doesn't allow my grip to give out before my strength does, until I get straps, of course. So I do these for about five reps to six reps for five sets, and my hamstrings were on fire for like two, three days, I'm not gonna lie. After that, I did split squats. <sighs> not just regular split squats, okay, I did a drop set. I did 10 reps with the weights. I did one weight in my hand. Sometimes I like to do two, sometimes I do one. It really just depends on how I feel for that day, especially because I knew I was doing a drop set where after the 10th rep, I dropped the weight and I continued to do another 10 straight. And that basically is like 20 reps per leg. And so when you do this, you wanna make sure that you're actually leaning your torso forward. So you're not dropping your shoulders and rounding your shoulders, but just bending at your hips so that you can engage your glutes and feel your glutes stretching as you go all the way down and come all the way back up, making sure that your shins are vertical and parallel to your torso. And let me tell you, this burns, okay? Like, this literally burns. One trick I also like to do is I also like to do my weaker leg first, which is my left leg in front, right leg on the box or the bench, and then I switch and do my stronger leg, just because I feel like it allows me to carry out the movement more like effortlessly, because if I do my second leg as my left leg, I'm gonna die, I just know it. And another trick, you guys don't have to use the bench to do these, as long as your foot's elevated, it's just as effective. My next exercise was more of an easier exercise, an accessory exercise, I won't call it, which was a cable kickbacks. I did three sets of 12 reps on each leg, once again, starting with my weaker leg, which is my left leg. And for this, you guys wanna make sure that your back is completely flat. So you don't wanna have an arched back. 
and you don't want to over kick because if you over kick you actually will arch your back at the top of my kick i do however squeeze my glutes to make sure that i am engaging my glutes because this once again targets the gluteus maximus which is the lower part of your glutes which will help give you that lift so i like to do this kind of towards the end because it's more of an easier exercise for me from that i went ahead and did a sumo squat which was another job set what was i thinking i don't even know but basically once again i went ahead and did sumo squats with one dumbbell in my hand and I'm making sure that I'm going as low as possible and also trying to work on not having my knee cave in. I notice that when I have my stance too wide, my knee does cave in. So I like to keep my stance a little bit more narrow with my toes pointing outwards and leaning my torso forward as I go down to really engage my glutes as well as my inner thigh. You should feel this. Like I feel in my inner thigh, so you should feel it as well. And once I finished doing 15 reps with the dumbbell, I dropped it and superset right into body weights. I'm holding my head just because this is the most like convenient, easiest way for me to go about it you can do whatever you want with your hands this is to make a difference honestly because it's still gonna burn regardless <laughs> let me tell you then the last one I did was to engage my hamstrings which were kettlebell swings three sets of 15 reps I love doing these because these not only target my hamstrings but it also targets my glutes because of the hinge in motion I'm doing so I'm not squatting down with the kettlebell but rather hinging back like I would do as an RDL so that I can feel my lower part of my glutes as well as my hamstring engaging keeping my back nice and flat with my chest upright so that I don't round over and feel in my lower back and let me tell you this also kind of wins you out because it's a high intensity workout at the end of my workout i did my five minute cool down now, i'm not gonna lie to you guys honestly i don't stretch like i very rarely stretch it's actually not good because i preach this to my clients i tell them to stretch i make stretching videos for them everything and i just don't do myself so one of my goals and resolutions for this year is to really take the time like literally five minutes which for me is probably about like two full songs to stretch my body and stretch the muscles that I've worked out. So here I'm doing static stretching where I'm actually holding the stretch for about like 20 seconds each stretch and really trying to go further and further when I feel like the stretch, like I feel like I can stretch a bit more, that's when I'll reach further into my stretch. And I do the same stretches on each side, specifically my hamstrings and my hips, as you guys can see here, because those are the muscles that tend to be the tightest after my workouts. And I'm not gonna lie, I've been feeling really good after these um, stretches I've been doing. So that is everything I did for my day one of hammies and glutes day. And then for my day two, I did back and biceps. Back and biceps have become one of my favorite days of the week because having a strong back to me is just so sexy. I like to start off with doing dynamic stretching and what I do my dynamic stretching, I actually like to do this with a resistant band. So I found a resistant band at the gym that's actually broken, hence why it's not a loop. And I just like to do a few movements, just mobilizing my shoulders with this resistant band to make sure that my shoulders are nice and like loosened up and not too tight. Also stretching my rear delts, which is the muscle just behind your shoulder in the top back of your back, obviously. <laughs> and then stretching my lats because I will be doing some lat exercises like lat pull downs. Generally, it takes me about three to five minutes to fully warm up. And then I went ahead and did my exercises. So my first heavy lift were bent over rolls with a barbell. And so just like I do for my leg day, I like to do just the barbell to warm up to make sure that I'm feeling it in the muscles I want to feel it in. So for that, that's my rear delts as well as my rhomboid muscle, which is the top middle part of my back. And I make sure I hinge back forward far enough so that my chest is facing forward so I don't feel this in my lower back. Then I added on weight, which was 70 pounds added to the bar. I'm like so impressed with myself that I can actually pull this much, making sure that I'm controlling the weight and not trying to swing my body too forward to use momentum to pull the weight up and keeping a slight pause at the top. And I went all the way to like, I literally couldn't, which was like five, six reps, cause this is heavy, okay? But I'll still proud of myself. My next exercise were wide grip lat pull downs. I did three sets for 10 reps. And this is really good, you guys, to engage your lats. So I know your lats is kind of a hard like muscle for a lot of people to engage. So what you wanna make sure here is first you wanna make sure that you retract your shoulders backwards. I like to do this every like fourth rep because sometimes it tends to, you know, lift my shoulders a little bit high as I bring my arms up. And you wanna make sure that you are pulling your elbows in towards the lower back. So think as if you had like, you know people who have those like tattoos in the lower part of their back? think as though you want to pull your elbows towards that tattoo that's a really good cue that i've learned and it really does help me engage my lats after that i went ahead and did my assisted pull-ups i almost said non-assisted but no they're assisted pull-ups with my resistant bands and this is just going to allow me to get to my goal of doing pull-ups you have to do this exercise in this movement a few times in the week so that you actually can be able to do them non-assisted and these are hard like i don't know why but whenever i get to like you know my failure rep i always have to just wiggle my feet all the way to the top 
but I will get these one day. From that, I went ahead and did some straight arm pull downs. These are actually a new exercise I incorporated into my back day because I felt like my back days were just not long enough. I didn't have enough back exercises. And so I kind of rediscovered these because I knew these always existed, just never really did them. And let me tell you, these are really good for engaging your back, especially your lats. Because let me tell you, girl, one thing about having that hour shaped glass figure, if you have wide lats, it gives the illusion of a smaller hip or smaller waist is more so the proper term. So did these for 10 reps, making sure I'm keeping my arms nice and straight, pulling all the way down to my thighs. I then ended off my workout with bicep curls. Now I like to do bicep curls with a fixed dumbbell because I just get better coordination than trying to balance two dumbbells in my hands. But bicep curls are so humbling for me because I guess my biceps are weak, like they are there, I can see the definition, but they're so weak because clearly these were a struggle. And one thing about bicep curls, you want to keep your core engaged and make sure that your elbow is tight next to your ribs so you're not swinging your arms forward to lift it up, use momentum. But it took everything out of me, like I could have barely get that last rep up. I wanted to give up but I told myself you can do this and I just gave it everything and pulled that all the way up so I was super proud of myself for that but my arms were killing me. Then to end off this workout, I did cardio. So I do my cardio on my upper body days because I like to do the Stairmaster. I go for a speed of three to four and I like to do for 12 minutes with a one minute cool down. And I like to step with my heel then toe because this allows me to engage my glutes. Then after my cardio, I went ahead and cooled down with some stretches. So these stretches are basically kind of the same thing I did for my dynamic stretching in the beginning. But as you guys can see here, I'm actually just holding the stretch longer for about like 20 seconds each stretch. Well, you guys can actually see this because I'm speeding it up a little bit and clipping like the clips. But I actually went and held each stretch for 20 seconds and these feel so good. Like I mainly was stretching my back because I noticed that I had a lot of tension and tightness in my back. And I know I have a lot of knots too, especially in the top part of my back. So doing these stretches and taking the time to just cool down for about five minutes. So two full songs is definitely something everyone should be incorporated into the workout, including myself. And that pretty much wraps up everything I did for day two on back and biceps. So day three, I hit another upper body day and this was triceps, shoulders, and the chest day, which I'm happy I incorporate these now because I never did this before, I'm my little lot of you. <laughs> so for my dynamic stretching, pretty much I do the exact same stretching that I did for my back and biceps day, mainly just mobilizing more my shoulders because since I am working my shoulders, I wanna make sure that my shoulders are not tight and they're all loosened up. Do some cat cows, these are really good for your back if you do them properly. And I just ended off with doing some child pose to like Cobra, cause I think these are really effective. Now you can also do these as a static stretch at the end of your workout. But as you guys know, as I mentioned like a thousand times already in this video, I am going in and out of the stretch. So this is dynamic. The first exercise I did were assisted pull-ups. Cause as you guys already know, I'm trying to get my non-assisted pull-up game up for this year. So I like to start off with this because this is a hard exercise for me. It's a struggle to even get to six reps. So I like to get this out the way when I have all of the energy and like my muscles are not exhausted from the other exercises. Even though this is a back exercise, it's still something that is upper body and is a goal of mine. And I need to do this a few times a week if I wanna get my goal. So <laughs> yeah. So from that, I went ahead and did some tricep skull crushers. Now, if you guys have never done these before, you need to go ahead and do them, especially if you're someone like me who barely ever really works out their triceps and have probably the weakest triceps ever. These are so humbling because they are a tricep isolation exercise. So you are strictly working your tricep, like mainly working your tricep. And in order to do that, you wanna make sure that you're keeping your arms as straight as possible. So you don't wanna swing them front and back and use the momentum to lift the weight, but rather just your triceps. And I like to bring my arms a little bit behind my head before like bringing the weight up and down because that allows more emphasis on my triceps. And I did a lot of reps, I did 15 reps. I wanted to give out my baby triceps were so struggling but I want to get stronger triceps that's a goal of mine from that I did shoulder press with 25 was that 25 no that was 20 I did 25 the other day but these were the 20 pound dumbbells I have grown to actually love shoulder press if you're a woman do not be afraid to do shoulder press okay you want to make sure however that you bring your elbows a bit forward you don't want your elbows parallel to your back because that can strain your shoulder and you also want to make sure that you're dropping the weight low enough to get that full range of motion as you go down and come all the way up. A cue to make sure that you're pushing the weight over your head is to make sure that your biceps cover your air, okay? That's a good cue that I think keeps a lot of people in check. My next exercise were dumbbell bench press. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Chest press are new exercises that I incorporated into my workout because when I got an assessment done by a personal trainer, she told me that my chest is weak as hell. <laughs> like, plain out, simple, my back is strong, my chest is not strong, I need to balance that out. 
so i've been incorporating some chest exercise like chest press and these are really good and super hard i will say one thing well a couple things you want to keep in mind make sure that when you come down you're keeping your elbows slightly inwards and not flaring them out too much to the side also make sure that you have a slight arch in your lower back so the top of your back and your glutes should be pressed against the bench and i like to make sure that my feet are a bit behind me so i can really push off of them to get the weights up and to end my workout i did a superset as if like i weren't exhausted enough in my shoulders so i started off the superset with front arm raises basically here i'm making sure that my arms are controlling the weight so i'm not letting the weight just swing back down and also keeping my elbows slightly bended while keeping my wrists shoulders and elbows all in alignment so not having the weights go beyond my shoulders then once i finished doing the eight reps i went straight into doing lateral raises for another eight reps now these unlike the front arm raises work your lateral and rear delt whereas the front arm raises works your anterior so the front of your shoulders as you guys can see here i'm actually bringing my arms slightly forward and not completely out to the side and just like i'm so in love with my back this is why i like to lift heavy on back day but that's everything I did. I didn't record my cardio or my dynamic stretching, but I did the Stairmaster once again for 12 minutes and the stair, like basically the same static stretching I did on my back and bicep day. So day four of my week of workouts usually consists of quads and glutes. So what I usually start off with as usual is my dynamic stretching, just moving in and out of a movement to warm up my muscles. And the movements I do are solely based on the exercises I'm gonna do. So because like on my quads and glutes day, I tend to do a lot of hip flexion with like squats, I have to stretch out my hips. So right now I'm doing just an up and down deep squat to not only stretch out my hamstring, but my hips. Then I do a rocking forward and backwards to stretch out my hamstring and my inner thigh as well as my hips by just basically pushing my knee out to the side as I lean forward. That just helps open up my hips and it's actually a really good stretch. Then I just do a little bit of like lateral lunges from side to side and pretty much just warm up my body until I feel warmed up and ready to get into my workout. If I feel not warmed up after like five minutes, I literally will keep warming up. Of course, I start off with my heavy lifts, which are back squats here. And as usual, I just warm up with just a barbell because it's one of my bigger lifts, making sure that my form is good. I'm not winking my butt. So I'm checking out my form in the mirror on the side. And I am going very deep because that's like a goal of mine to hit like a heavy deep squat with like four plates. So two plates on each side. Once everything feels good and my form feels good, I started just slowly adding on weight and doing about, I would say like five reps per set as I kept adding on weight. And obviously the heavier the load got, the less reps I was able to do. With squats, you guys do want to push back. So hinge your hips back and drop your hips down and you want to go as low as possible. Now everyone's squat will look different based on your anatomy and your hip placement. And mine looks kind of like this because I have kind of like long legs. So I have to open my legs a bit wider. But guys, I was so happy that I was able to like back squat this amount of weight by myself. I'm really coming for like two plates on each side real soon. So my next big lift was sumo deadlifts. And this is actually an exercise I'm incorporating more and more into my quad day because I do want to lift heavier with this. I do prefer these more than the conventional deadlifts. So this is why I do these. So what I like to do is warm up with 90 pounds. So 45 pounds added on each side. And just to make sure my form and everything feels good. So I'm not feeling this in my lower back. I'm feeling this in like my inner thigh, my glutes, and my quads. So you guys want to pick a weight that's a bit challenging but not too hard. So the form that I like to do is make sure that my feet are basically underneath the bar. So the bar should be just over the tongue of your shoes. I like to grab it with an overhand and underhand grip so I have a better grip on the bar. And that way my grip doesn't give out before my strength does. And as you guys pull up, you want to make sure that you're pushing your knees outward. So like in the direction of your toes. And you're kind of like pushing your feet away from the ground if that makes sense like you're pushing your feet really down into the ground i hope that makes a lot of sense so i did a couple of reps with this and honestly it felt okay i felt good enough to go heavier so i kind of hit a new pr which i'm actually really excited about because i do want to be able to get to like 45 to 45 pounds actually on each side of the barbell and these felt really good so i'm super happy with that especially the fact that the bar was kind of going in a very linear like straight line form and not all over the place so my balance was pretty on point Next, I did hip thrusts. So hip thrusts are something that I've been incorporating twice a week. So basically on each leg day. Now, I've been noticing that whenever I do it on the hip thrust machine, I actually overarch my back. So I start to feel lower back pain. So I dropped the weight to really focus on form, making sure that I'm feeling it in my glutes. I have my feet directly under my feet and I'm keeping my back as flat as possible onto the bench. And this actually has worked tremendously. So sometimes you just have to drop the weight, correct your form before you keep adding on weight. From that, I went ahead and did leg extension. So as I mentioned earlier to you guys, one of my goals is really to grow my quads. Like I try to have quads of a stallion, like 
thick quads okay so this is a really good exercise for that because it isolates your quad muscles and as you guys can see my quads here are trembling like doing 10 reps for three sets had my quads on fire because i was picking a very challenging weight also making sure that i'm not jerking out my knees because you don't want to hurt the joints in your knees so i like to keep a slight bend in my knee as i extend them outwards and control the weight as i bring it back down and then to end off my leg day i did some reverse lunges three sets of 10 reps on each leg reverse lunges is honestly one of my favorite exercises when it comes to lower body because it not only targets my quads which is obviously something i want to target and get bigger but it also targets my glutes so something i like to do to just get the emphasis on my glutes is i like to lean slightly forward like i would do with bulgarian split squats and as i come up i like to push through my heel now that doesn't mean that i keep my toes off the floor i actually keep my foot flat but i'm pushing off of my heels even though my feet are grounded so i hope that makes sense and then to end off this workout i did a five minute cool down so this just consisted of the stretches i pretty much did actually on day one for my hammies and glutes day doing the exact stretches on both legs for about 20 seconds but putting this time a little bit more emphasis on my inner thighs as well as my hips and my quads not so much my hamstrings since this time i didn't do more like a quad focus workout i like to also listen to like two songs to make sure i'm doing this for five minutes and if i ever feel like any other part of my body that feels a little sore from any of the workout i did that week i like to stretch that out but that is all you guys that's everything i have for this week of workout i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to hit that subscribe button and i'll catch you next time bye